Hello there. It's Hi. an absolute pleasure to meet you. My name is Cece. I'm the host of Zeal for Jersey. Cece! Yeah, Cece from Zeal for Jersey. <laughs> and I am beyond excited about our conversation Aww, today. Thanks. My podcast is all about celebrating the world of anime and manga that Great. speaks to the hearts of Fujoshis and Fudanshis like me. Ah. Mm. At Silver Joshi, we're all about the joy of diving into the stories, the character, and the creative expressions that makes our fandom so vibrant. I hope I can answer all the questions yeah. properly. Our listeners are avid fans of your incredible work, <laughs> oh, and this interview is an opportunity for them to okay. get to know you. So, Jenny Kwan, welcome. Thank it's an you. absolute pleasure to have you I join us in this that. episode. Um, your versatility in bringing characters like Suki from Avatar, Chun Li from Street Fighter, and this is my personal favorite, Sonoko from ah! Detective Conan. <laughs> and funny. soon, I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it, but I know you're also gonna be the mother of Inosuke. Oh, in that, Slayer. that's already out. Yeah, that, a, a little smidgen. It's a little like, smidgen. Just yeah. a little dramatic <laughs> smidgen. Mm -hmm. It's truly remarkable. Um, before we delve into this series of questions, yes. could you share to us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I started acting when I was 11 years old, and I'm definitely not 11 anymore. <laughs> but I started when I was 11 years old, um, and I simultaneously started acting and singing at the same time. Um, and so I didn't land my first job until I was about 16, was, which was actually a voiceover job. I played the role of Audrey, the singing voice of Audrey in Little Shop, which was based off of the Broadway musical Little Shop of Horrors. Um, and so, uh, so I started doing that. And then little by little, I uh, well, not little by little, but I did have a guest star, my second job was on 90210, the original 90210, and I had a, a small part in that. And then at age 18, I landed the role of Miss Saigon um, Kim in, in the show. And then I did a show called California Dreams, which was on TNBC. And here and there, like, I mean, I could go through my whole history, yeah. but I've done a lot of guest um, spots and I was in two bands. And my voiceover career right now has been very, very fruitful for the past few years. I was doing voice over here and there um, in between TV and film, but in the last few years, I've really dwelled back into it and really dug in. And it was just one of my goals to do voice acting. And so for those of you who don't know it, there's a lot of work put on behind the scenes. There's a lot of work, I say, before you actually work, which means if you're lucky enough to audition a lot, I consider that work in itself without getting paid yet. You know, so I'm doing that every day in my booth. If I don't give myself a day off, which I've scheduled days off now, um, then I don't have a day off because I'm in my booth every day doing auditions, if I have a voiceover session, if I'm at cons on the weekends, and then I have private clients as well. Um, and not only that, but you know, I, I, I try to have a personal life, which is a little bit challenging sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a balance for sure. Um, getting to know a little bit more about you and your passions. Yes. Uh, what, is there any favorite anime that you like? Any favorite anime? Wow. Um, I would say <laughs> it's interesting. I, I voice, um, I dub a character by the name of Mayuko Nise on High Rise Invasion. <laughs> and, um, and it's, she's, it's a very sort of quirky, sort of dark, sort of gory, but funny anime. So maybe something along those <laughs> lines without giving away too much of the plot. If people haven't seen High Rise Invasion yet, go see it. English dub. <laughs> Can you share any funny or memorable moments from a recording session that still makes you laugh? Okay, so I'll try and make this brief. But when I was recording Avatar, um, my co-star Jack DeSena, who plays Sokka, he's just a couple years younger than me. He probably hates it when I tell this story, but he's, he's younger than me. And so when we would record, it would be Jack and myself and sometimes other characters as well. But there was a an episode by the name of The Serpent's Pass where Jack and I have to share some intimate moments. And so when I walk in the booth, it was a very, very tiny booth. He's on his phone like this. 
And he's like, oh, hey, you know, just, mm -hmm. hey. And somehow the director got into conversation with me and, and, and she was talking about my age. <clears throat> I think she was talking about actually California Dreams or something like that. And, and then Jack realized how old I was. And then he was like, oh, hey, Jenny. I was like, I'm not trying to pick up on you. Don't worry about it. Like, seriously. So then he calmed down after that. But now that we've done cons together, he's like, that's not why, Jenny. He's like, I was nervous. I'm like, yeah, sure, Jack. But, okay, <laughs> I got you. So. Um, guide us through some of the cherished moments in your voice acting career. Can you describe a character that you felt the strongest emotional connection? Wow, that's a, a tall order. Um, when people ask me if I have a favorite, it's hard for me to say I have a favorite just because all the characters, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to have voiced different types of characters. Um, I, but I will point out that 13 from Scissor 7, what I like about her character is she has to learn how to basically become a human because she's taught to be this assassin, right? Um, for those of you who don't know, she's the 13th best assassin in the world. Um, so she has to learn how to become more human and more um, compassionate and more uh have more empathy for her, her co-star or her, you know, like love interest, so to speak. Um, so that was really interesting. And it was, I think I also like it because the process of recording it, the director really pushed me really hard. And I, you know, I had to learn some things about um, myself and my process around acting in the booth. And I'm grateful for that. Um. As we plunge into your, can we plunge into your ongoing projects or maybe recent ventures? What excites you the most about your current projects and what can fans look forward to? You know, uh, I think I'm, I'm able to say it now because they're out. Um, I've been doing a lot of video games lately. Um, I'm on an ongoing game called um, Chronicles of Miasma. I just did Diablo 4 um, and also, um, 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 land of the morning light. Um, and so it's just been, I just want to say that I just feel very, very lucky to voice. All, they're all different, very just everywhere, like across the board, as far as different characters go. And that people just keep calling me back to do these different characters. And, you know, I mean, Again, Diablo 4, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> that Diablo 4, the, there was a 3, there was a 2, there was, so the fact that I'm in this rendition of it, and um, it, it was also kind of a big release too, and, and yeah, it's just been really fun to be able to experience that. Okay, so get ready for a little bit of a delightful dash of interactive fun. Can you oh. share a line? from one of your favorite characters using your own voice. Using my own voice? Yeah. They're going to say, well, you sound like the character because <laughs> a lot of the times some, I'm, I shouldn't say a lot of the times, but well, yeah, a lot of the times it's your voice and then whatever you bring to the character, unless you're Daffy Duck or something very arc iconic or a monster, but I'm saying this as myself. Yeah. Just a, um, a favorite line. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sound like my character, but um, I am a warrior. Yeah. But I'm a girl too. So it's awesome. kind of like cheeky and me at the same time. Yeah. Um, exciting possibilities ahead without revealing any spoilers. Mm -hmm. Can you tease us about any upcoming projects that you're involved in? That I'm allowed to talk about? Let's see. Or um, tease about. <laughs> um, there is a ginormous video game that is, I think it was supposed to come out last no, last year, sometime, we'll just say last year. Um, and it's gonna be a, a crazy big video game. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> that I'm, I think I'm allowed to say that within its parameters. Yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Jenny Kwan, what message would you like to share with fans who admire your work? I just wanna say thank you so much, you guys, for just all the love and support that you constantly share with me. Um, 
I, I feel that I should say a lot of the times people don't know the reason why people, actors, let's just say actors, anime, video game, on screen, what have you, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fandom, right? So when you come to different conventions or you or shows are picked up, or for example, Suki was only supposed to be one episode because you guys really showed the love and support for us or our characters. A lot of the times it's because of you guys, why we're here. So thank you. And I appreciate you guys, you know, always supporting and, and loving um, what we do. I really appreciate that. Well, Miss Jenny Kwan, I extend my warmest thank yous thank for you. taking this time on your yeah. very, very busy schedule here in Anime Magic. <laughs> thank you. Thank no, you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Cece, yeah. Just a little thing. What? You. My mother taught me that I would, I should always give a thank you for anyone Aww. who's doing it. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Ooh, what is this? Oh. 